Hey guys, my name is Ryan and I am making a series of videos uh, for intermediate level guides for Spirit Island to help you uh, build up your confidence such that you'll be able to take on more challenging adversaries. Uh, the theme of today's video is going to be all about fear and events and what kinds of things that we can do to plan around fear, how we can maximize the utility that they can give us, and events. Um, you know, what are a couple events that are devastating that we want to play around, and what are the kinds of things that we can reasonably expect events to do to help us out. So if we actually take a minute to look at the fear cards, we'll see that there's a couple things that the fear cards do. The official um, app has 30 fear cards, and really they all do various versions of three things. They provide defense in lands, they remove invaders, and then there's a couple skip actions. That's really it. That's all that they do, uh, and just various ways of doing it. So um, this one is um, invaders don't build or explore, depending on your terror level, where there's the Han. This provides defense where you have presence. Um, uh, this one, as you get to higher level, it lets the Han do damage. I would categorically say that that's removing invaders. Okay, and then this is defense with Dahan, right? This is damage because of Dahan, so on and so forth. You'll see that it's largely all variations of the same thing. Uh, adding strife, I would categorically define as defense. Um, so whether it be adding strife or um, you know skipping a ravage, uh, skipping a build, skipping an explore. Uh, another variation on skipping and explore. Uh, the really the the fear cards just do three things: provide defense, remove invaders, and skip actions. They are good at solving small problems for you, but if you can solve a small problem without having to use an action card or a power card, um, then you can snowball that into a much greater advantage over the course of the game. All right, now if we come and take a look at the event cards, the uh, official online version has 22 event cards in the game, and they all have uh, different upper texts, but they all also will have on the bottom um, something that happens to do with beasts, some that have to do with Dahan, some that have to do with diseases, um, and then a couple that interact with Strife as well. Um, of the 22 on the app, 13 of them uh, do something either positive or useless with beasts, and 20 of the 22 do something positive or useless with the Dahan. Um, there are no negative beast events, and there are no negative Dahan events. The, some of the diseases uh, will kill off your Dahan, so that's something that you certainly want to be aware of. Um, but otherwise, the types of events that I pay attention to, that I want to play around, uh, cultural assimilation, I think, is the most devastating one. Uh, transforming a Dahan into a town is just a huge swing um, that I really like to avoid. Uh, keep this one in mind because you can play around it. As long as you don't have an isolated Dahan, it can't trigger cultural assimilation. So this is one that I try to uh, get out of the way to prevent it from happening as quickly as possible. Uh, another one that a lot of people find devastating is Farmers Seek the Dahan for Aid. Um, you can't do anything to play around this one, so I don't bother um, you know, spending too much time thinking about it. And then there's a couple of events which increase the damage that is dealt on Ravage, uh, such as this one increasing aggression, stages 2 and 3. Invaders do plus 1 damage when Ravaging. Uh, there's some other ones, um, such as this if you choose to pay for the wind, makes buildings do one extra damage. Uh, there's others that do that with cities, if I can find it. Um, and then there's others that do that with towns. But um, the moral of the story, yeah, this one does it with cities, does plus two damage. So the moral of the story here is that um, it is perfectly valid to over-defend lands. Um, you know, if you have excess defend, don't really know what to do with it, just Put it down in a land where you could be hurt by the extra damage. Um, 
So we just want to be cognizant of places where we are taking one damage after accounting for defend because it is possible that damage could be added and that things could get worse for us. This game will be playing as Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares against England 3. Um, Bringer cannot remove invaders with his own powers, so he has to rely on the removal abilities of the fear cards or by utilizing the defense in addition to the Han movement in order to destroy the invaders. To, and you can produce fear that way as well. Um, England is going to be a tricky matchup because if they get seven buildings on one land, uh, then they win. Right? And we can't uh, stop that just with our own powers. So we have to find creative ways to use the fear cards in order to accomplish that goal. All right, so here we are. We start off with a Sans Explore. So a couple things with Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares in general is he only has three elements that he cares about, at least for his innates. Um, and two of them he already gets on his presence track. Uh, the last one is the animal. So having a single animal will net you up to two additional fear. And when fear is the only way that we can win the game, that's important and that adds up. We start off with two animal cards in our starting grip. So I like to avoid playing them um, at the same time. So that way I can get a little bit of extra fear at the beginning of the game. Um, so we have a very easy explorer for us. There's no additional buildings. If it was one of the other three, we'd be in a little bit of a trickier spot, but seeing as we're just looking at you know, two towns, two explorers, we can use predatory nightmares in the slow phase and kick one of those towns out. And then we can just use dread apparitions to defend the other one next turn. So um, we won't be in range to kick out this town. So we'll just bring our guy in, Predatory Nightmares, use uh, Dreams of the Dahan to set up for a counterattack over here. And let's get this party started. All right, and this innate for Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares is fantastic. It lets us look at a fear card ahead of time. So since we can't remove things with our own powers, we know that fear cards largely just provide defense, they remove invaders, and they skip actions. They're all very defensive, um, but finding ways for free defense is great, um, so that we can know where to put our Dahan and pick up a few extra free kills. Um, or removing invaders can you know, supplement defense. So um, I generally like to look at Terror Level 2 and downwards. The first couple cards that are activating at Terror Level 1 are so weak that I generally just don't bother. Um, you also just don't have as much time to set up and plan around them. So I like to start looking at the Terror Level 2 cards and going down from there. So that way, um, you know, if, if you need to change your decision making, you have an opportunity to do so. So here we can see that we're going to add a strife in a land with Dahan. This is great, right? This provides a little bit of defense for us. So we can plan around this and hopefully get a nice um, counterattack with the Dahan in a couple turns from now. All right. So here we want to push the town not in a land that's about to be ravaging soon. So it's a little bit dangerous to have two buildings in one land against England, but um, really we're just trying to kill time until later. And then obviously we want to push the Dahan into the land where something's going to happen. And we're going to have plenty of energy, so I'm just going to pick up a minor power. And Sap is fantastic. It defend five because in this land it's going to be ravaging for six. Um, on the next turn, we could bring back some Dahan movement, put three Dahan in, defend five, kill everything. That's a great series of options. Uh, Rise is nice. It has a little bit better elements for us with that moon. Uh, lets us move some Dahan. We can also prevent builds. Super relevant against England. And doing so also provides fear, which we like. Call to Isolation does have two of our elements, um, but pushing only one Dahan, not so great. 
and pushing without producing fear, like that's a little bit better, not insane. Teaming rivers, removing blight, uh, it's always very nice. There is no targets yet. There might wind up with one in this land, um, depending on you know putting a defend five here. But as of right now, it doesn't really do anything. The beast doesn't do much for us. It provides you know only the animal. Uh, it, it, it just doesn't have as great of a ceiling for me. So I'm going to pick up Sap. This card will be very valuable for the entire game. Then we'll stick with our plan A. So looking ahead to the future, we can replace a town with an explorer on a coastal land. Great. You know, you could think of this as like a defend one. Right? It, you could think of this as like building removal, since we largely don't care about how many explorers exist against England, just about you know, quantity of buildings. So this provides a lot of different utility options for us. Um, great, and we will defend here. I always make sure to play Call on Midnight Stream last, because if we pick up a major that's off element, we would lose access to our innates. So want to play all my innates first, make sure we get both fear, not just one fear, and then we can take a dive and see what we get. Okay, so um, trees and stone speak of war. Great, this is damage, and then def defend with Dahan. Great, we have lots, this sap, lots of great um, defense with Dahan cards. So that'll put a lot of power on Dreams of the Dahan, and we can also use Predatory Nightmares because it also has a Dahan push. So all of a sudden these cards gain a lot of value in combination with these other cards. And then obviously if we forget Call, then this is also a Defend card. So all of our cards will be Dahan, Defend, right? That's a, that's a pretty linear game plan. Unrelenting Growth, this card is always insane. Being able to add two additional presents uh, always super powerful. That would put us up to four energy gain, the extra element. And then next turn, we might just do like a reclaim one. So we could do sap and then bring back the um, dreams of the Dahan. So that would already put us up to, if I can get there, that can get us all the way up to the free element. And then after that, if we forget unrelenting growth, that's probably just fine, right? We'll probably reclaim from there, gain a power card, gain a major, replace unrelenting growth and you know, we'll just say thank you very much for the acceleration. Okay, that's great. Savage Transformation. Normally, I love this card, right? It's got perfect elements for us. Fear, right? Those Adding those extra animals is great because um, there's so many different event cards that have positive interaction with beasts. Uh, however, here against England, your explorers don't really do anything. And so beasts suddenly lose a lot of value. Mists of Oblivion. Uh, this card's pretty sweet. It um, has two of our elements, the Moon Wind, so it's very easy to trigger its threshold. All you need is a single um, Wind and Water card, and then you'll trigger its threshold. And so that one has a lot of potential for us as well. We don't have a Wind Water, so considering how good these two upper cards are, I'm less inclined to pick up Mists. Since we already have so much Defend, I'm not sure that Trees gives us anything that we really want. So I'm gonna pick up Unrelenting Growth. It's just always good, and we can just forget it again in the future. And this makes us push. Sad days. Well, I guess we won't be able to get all three to Han to fight back, but we'll still be able to do something. Okay, removing a single explorer, right? Not a big deal. I don't really concern myself with those less powerful fear cards. And now this land over here is going to be trouble. So let's just grow right into it. We've grown to this land, grow into this land. It is good to be at range zero so we can have our sap. Sap will get a full defense over here. So I think that's the land that we'll choose. Okay, we'll just stick with our game plan. Reclaiming our Dahan card. 
free element. Might as well take the moon to max out our innate. Okay. And unfortunately, we are not able to use this fear card this turn, but we might be able to use that in a future turn. Let's see what else we have coming down the line. Okay, removing a guy or a town from a land with two or fewer invaders. Great, and the element doesn't really matter. All right, here we go. A strife in the land with the hum. There we go. So if we were to move the explorer up here, then uh, we would blight that would be hitting for seven. And moving up here just makes it that much harder to defend in the future. Um, but going over here is great because it's just gonna die to the Dahan. So pick up a free explorer kill. All right, so now as we set ourselves up for the next turn, this jungle right here is going to be a big problem. Just three more builds and we lose. Okay, we already have this one coming up for the upcoming build, but then any stage two card that shows up uh, will trigger on this land. So we're gonna reclaim, we're gonna dig for a major, and we wanna find a major that will help <laughs> sorry, distribute these buildings. Um, so Instruments of the Rome Ruin is fine, right? We can strife one and you can have it push out to uh, a, a town and explore. So that reduces the quantity of buildings by one, right? It's not so bad. Jungle Hungers, we need to get into this jungle to use it, but curiously, Jungle Hungers is largely self, um, large, largely just takes care of itself. So if you use this any and turn that into a grass, and then you use this innate to also create a grass, we don't actually need a second grass card. Um, because of this moon here, this moon, that gives us the threshold. We would need the third moon in order to use this innate, but almost every card in our grip has moon. So Jungle Hungers, I like that, it's also pretty cheap. Sweep into the sea, uh, I don't like it so much because it pushes all of the buildings into one land. Then Entwine Power is just game cards. So I like Jungle Hungers. We can get rid of Unrelenting Growth since the bottom track is so weak, like you know, we could, we could accelerate down the bottom track, pick up an extra card play, but I think doing things is the name of the game from here on out. So let's see. We want to get ourselves up to Terra level two. That only takes one fear card though. And if we do that, add a strife in a land with Dahan. Okay, so we could add a strife to this guy here and that would still blight. So that's not crazy. Because we are already in this jungle, and we know we're getting a double build in this land, I am gonna play Jungle Hungers. It doesn't solve our primary problem, but it picks up a lot of fear along the way. And uh, let's see. Go for a Dread Apparitions that will defend this land. So we know we know for a fact that no other fear card is going to solve our problems for us. And we know we want to pick up a grass here, so we'll just get that out of the way. This gives us a moon animal, right? Predatory nightmares, right? We don't get to see another fear card and we don't get this a third fear, but we get a second fear. We don't have another card that'll do everything for us. 
And I'm not so sure I want to use Dread Apparitions to put all that energy preventing this Blight. Like, we could take Blight Blight and then not flip the Blight card. And I feel like this is a situation where just producing as much fear as we can and just getting ahead is more important than, you know, preventing every single little Blight from happening. Next turn, we're going to look to grow into this land. We might even pick up another Major. See if we can help ourselves survive this land, because with that build, and uh, we'd be looking at probably just losing right now. Let's do extra damage. These do random things. Get an extra Dahan. Why not? Strife in a land with the Han. Right? Always hit the buildings when you can. Yeah, so this is already at five. Right, build, build, done. So we are in a tough situation. Just to survive, we'll kick one town out. Right? So then build. Build, we'll be at six. Okay, looking to grow in, use Jungle Hungers, use some other major just to keep kicking buildings out. Now we just need to produce as much fear as we possibly can because, you know, we're, we're, we're always threatening just losing because of this jungles. And over here, uh, we can get all kinds of fear. Three fear cards. So what did we pick up? Each player removes a dude over town from a land with two or fewer invaders. Okay, both of these sands. One of those sands will be our target. Replace a town with an explorer on a coastal land. Right, we'll probably, I don't know, target this guy, this guy, uh, probably target this one. Right, go from three buildings down to two. A mystery. Okay, right, so we got a few good ones. This turn. Uh, looking to put a little bit of defense here, just with the Dread Apparitions and the Any, I could just do an Animal, and that will fully defend this land. So, we want to dig for a Major that will... Fuck. I meant to dig for a Major. Well, that's what I get for clicking super fast. Well, we know that we can survive this next turn. Maybe I'll just pick up a nature resilience, defend here, defend here, grow into this land, and then just <laughs> try for a major again. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Slow down, slow down, slow down. And dread apparitions. Go with that just to maximize our fear. Okay, since all these fear cards, you know, they're, they're already coming, I'm going to look at something else farther down the line. So another way to add strife to an invader. Okay. Um, you know, the element largely doesn't matter. Okay. With this one, we have enough energy to trigger twice. And we have two places that we could do a trigger. I'm fine with sacrificing this presence. Like I have so much presence on the board and I really don't need sacred sites for much. I can always just add one since I have a lot of ways to add presence. So I'm just gonna pay three energy, kick out this town. Um, with all these fear cards, I'm willing to bet this will be taken care of. So I'll kick the town into this wetlands and then um, sacrifice this presence. damage oh haha <laughs> with events um, you can't kill things with your power cards but an event is not your power card so that's why it works sorry forgot that interaction we 
And with two or fewer invaders, get rid of that one because it's building next. Defend two and all your lands. Okay, Strife makes you take damage. These lands are already going to die, so the extra damage doesn't matter. If we added a Strife to this town, it would kill the town. Okay, that's pretty useful. And, you know... The strife over here wouldn't do anything. Normally, I'd like to add strife to cities for future use, but we know that we're not going to be ravaging for a little bit, and our hope is to win before uh, this unknown card ravages. So let's just pick up one extra fear. Right, time for a little bit of a Hail Mary because we lose on the build phase. Right, so all of a sudden, I don't care about defend anymore. I just need to not lose. Okay, 12 fear, that's quite a bit. Power card, major. And here we go, insatiable hunger of the swarm is insane for us. Vigor would normally be very good. We could, you know, Dreams in and then Vigor to push them out. Um, okay, adding Strife to an Invader, right? So that'll defend this land. That'll die to the Han. Um, this land, you know, we're really not in a position where we care so much about de losing to Blight. We care about losing to um, the Seven Buildings. So normally I think Insatiable Hunger is like the best major for Bringer. However, because the beast is not adjacent to it, um, it's only going to be doing two fear and then four damage. So kicking out two towns. So it'll produce um, two less fear than if we just went for Vigor. And by going for Vigor, we don't preemptively blight ourselves. So it just gives us a little bit better chance of not blighting out. So I'm going to pick up Vigor for that reason. And we will sacrifice probably Predatory Nightmare. Because this is slow and we are in the mood to win in the fast. And then I'm going to just create a Sacred Site on the other side of the board. Just to make sure that you know if we were to pick up something that needs a Sacred Site, we can. Um, if I were to add a moon, get that sun, wouldn't cut the bill, but it'll produce another fear. So let's go for it this way. Play around cultural assimilation. Okay, normally, if you, it's always good to pick up the cities, right? That produces five fear as opposed to two talent, which is four fear. However, once again, we are prioritizing not losing. So um, by kicking out two towns, that'll put us down to four. Build uh, uh, escalation, that'll put us back up to six. Anything less would make us lose, guaranteed. So we just want to kick these guys out and just survive. That's the name of the game. All we want to do is survive. Okay. Push any number of guys from a single land. Great. Well, we already solved this problem, but we can use this to, since we know that we have um, strife coming down the line, we can just do this. Okay, strife. Protect ourselves here. Now, if I recall that event that we just got, yeah, it does three extra damage in this land. So I'm actually going to Strife an Explorer, which is not something I thought I would ever do. But by Strife in this Explorer, um, we will prevent a Blight because the event card uh, does plus three damage in lands uh, where you have Presence. All right, 
And now we are exactly one fear card away from winning. So we can just reclaim, play the exact same two cards in the exact same land, and we will win the game. Minor, doesn't really matter. Boom, boom, thank you very much. Let's just produce a silly amount of fear. So that'll be 10, 11, 12 fear. We need one fear card, but we're going to get three. All right, and that's the game. Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares. Um, he lets you see the fear cards in advance, let you play around that randomness. And I think he's a great spirit to play a lot of to help make you more aware of what the fear cards do. Sometimes with other spirits, you have good control of the game just with your powers that a lot more of the fear cards just become useless. Whereas Bringer, you are so reliant on these fear cards that you become much, much more aware of what they do. And you can set yourself up in a way such that you will win with those fear cards. So I felt like there was a couple turns over the course of this game where we were able to leverage um, a fear card or two that we knew was coming up in advance in order to allow us to you know, basically skip entire problems. So that is the game. Thank you very much and embrace the fear.